Jerry Jeff Walker. Thank you. Thank you. I had uh, thought about starting the questions by uh, saying that somewhere back there I, I knew that uh, you were the house band at a club in Dallas that, that Bob Wills called home. And Bob Wills Ranch, yeah. Right. Yeah, and then we were talking a little bit about it before we went up, and you told me it was around 1948, and then I bumped in the hallway to a friend of mine, and he <laughs> said he was there around 1951. So I want to get this straight right away. So can we get Mr. Johnny Gimble to come on up hey, here? Johnny. And... <laughs> He's around here somewhere. No, it was October 1950 that, uh, that they opened the ranch house, and so it had to be after that. Right, well, you had band, band but at that time, what was it, the Melody Ranch? No. Oh, something. I had the ranch house boys. There you go. Yeah, it yeah. was Bob Will's ranch house, and uh, Bob left me there with the house band, and... Uh, he left me there with Luke. <laughs> <laughs> but at least Eldon was around somewhere to keep yeah. Luke straight. Eldon had to come and keep Luke straight. Eldon Chamblin, we're talking right. about. Great, great guitar player. Oh, still the best. Well, the first question I had asked was, what time, what point did you go to a large band? And you'd said that you had a 10 or 14 piece band that you were going out of the club and, well, when and working. Well, when you played the ranch house, you didn't play with four or five pieces, you know. <laughs> Bob had a big band, so I had a big band there. So when did you decide to try the, the Nashville uh, scene? Was somebody encouraged well, you? Or? No, I got a, a friend of mine in the recording business, Troy Martin, who was uh, for the publishing Southern Music and Pure International. And uh, I had written some songs for Lefty Frizzell. And so he brought me as a publisher to Nashville and got me on the Friday night show that they call the Friday Night Frolics on right. WSM. And I was on Hank Williams' show. And Hank and I become fast friends, and Hank got me on the Grand Ole Opry. I was the first cat ever on the Opry without a hit record. And, uh, and he got me on the Opry, and I lived with him about six months before he left and went back to Shreveport. And then he, he died. Uh, he, I met him in Christmas in Dallas. He said he'd see me in Nashville. He's coming back to Nashville, but he didn't make it. Then the rest of it has been popular songs after each other and hit albums and uh, you're still out touring with as big a band as you can support. Well, yeah. In this day and age, I mean, it really, yeah. it's changing the style of music. Uh, people can't afford to take that. If you can find a keyboard player that can make all the strings, you try to stick it over there, but it's not the same as having the real fiddles. But uh, Well, what I'd like to do is do something that it's uh, like we used to do it and mm -hmm. where the people can hear the music and hear the pretty sounds of things. And uh, uh, that's just the way it, it is for me. And I have to stay that way. Well, good. And if we a song to... needs 40 violins, I'm gonna have 40 of them. You know, I ain't not be able to pay them, but I'm gonna have 40 of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back to some of that pretty music. And thank you very much, Ray, thank for you. sharing that with us. Thank you, Ray, thank for letting you. me visit.